Oh, Sergeant William Bailey, he was a man of high renown. Tura, lura, 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 lura. Then search a gallant young recruits he used to scour the town. Tura, lura, 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 lura. His face was full of swarty, a metal tea, a party, and ribbons on his chest. This book had a long gestation period, about five years. Although Robbie and I have known each other for a long, long time, it's got everything in there in terms of history and politics and sociology. And it's not just about Ireland, it's global. So we could range the whole world and try to find examples that try to either speak about the differences of some other colonialisms, but also the remarkable similarity across the globe as to whether you were subjected to the French, the British, the Dutch or whatever, it all ended up feeling the same. Over 100 years ago, you know, turn of the 20th century, there was a coming together of forces on this island and especially in this town that was remarkable in terms of the long history of conquest and colonisation. Coming together of socialists, feminists, republicans, actors, musicians, poets, all sorts of people around one common cause. Now they had all sorts of differences, but there was a common denominator to that cause and the common denominator was the republic. It was the right for the Irish to rule themselves without foreign monarch or anything else. We would argue that we are at a sort of similar conjuncture now in this period that we're in that there's a coming together that's happening for all sorts of reasons because of, well, COVID recently, but because of Brexit for us in the North, because of all sorts of things, that there is a meeting of minds about things at the moment. People don't necessarily call it the same thing. People don't necessarily have the same programme, but there is a coming together. And we see it in places like the North in particular, where you would have, for example, now people of colour, people from outside of this island who would be as committed to human rights and justice for all the people of the North and all the people of this island as people who were born there and have memories of marginalisation. We see unionists who now don't sort of dissolve at the mention of the possibility of a reunified country and are actually exploring things like what is it I would want out of such a reunification. But I think that there is a summer coming. I think there is a new dispensation on this island and that possibly quite soon, that day will maybe be a little bit quicker than we might have imagined. Liberation is not an event. Liberation is a process. If and when we do get this reunification, that's when the task begins. The task of beginning to say, what is this island that we want to build together for ourselves, for everybody, north, south, east and west. That point about the two states is for me absolutely crucial, that if we are serious about uh, beginning a process of reunification and finishing the revolution as we say it, that has to be a process of not dismantling one state in the six counties, but dismantling two states and constructing something that looks much closer to the republic that was democratically endorsed in 1918. When you're going through the book, I think that Connolly, as this great internationalist intellectual, is such an inspiring figure in terms of trying to make sense of the history. Of course, he wrote extensively on Irish history himself, but the ongoing importance of his work is there. There's no better space to be launching in. Even though we're so emotionally invested in 1916, the 1918 election was actually a much more significant event from at least one perspective, and that's the sense that for the only time in history, the whole island had a democratic choice to define what it wanted for the future, and of course that was explicitly a republic. The footnotes were the most fun part of the book to write, I have to say, because there's all sorts of stuff in there. I'll give you just one example. We could do a wee quiz here. The Act of Union, 1800, 1801. Did the Orange Order support the Act of Union or not? They haven't. They opposed it. Question two, did the Catholic Church support the Act of Union or not? Yes, they did. What you saw in the Act of Union was clearly an intensification of a colonial process that took a new form and and an unusual form in the sense that Ireland wasn't just being integrated into empire but also integrated into the the Union itself. And and what is most striking and, and also shocking about that is that, of course, Irish people didn't really play any role in that whatsoever. It was a tiny minority of the Irish population which uh, which supported the Act of Union. But yet through that, that process, people were against their wills without any dem- democratic consultation whatsoever, uh, were integrated into a union. So they were made 
British subjects of union. And why does that matter? It matters because, you know, within a generation, over a million people had starved to death and at least another million had been forced to emigrate. So in that context, understanding of Gordon Moore is about understanding the profound implications of the political context in which people find themselves in that time. And our reading of that is that it wasn't really an Irish famine at all. It wasn't a famine. It was actually a British starvation, and that's the way that we have to understand the political context in which it happened. And I think the resonance of that is still with us. There are inability as Irish people to really confront the horror of that history is still with us. It's wonderful to have AFRI supporting this. A lot of what I learned about colonialism was actually learned through my connections with AFRI. Just going on the Dilok Walk was so important for me to begin to ask about the legacy of some of those questions. And for us, Angorta Moore still becomes a definitive point in terms of how you begin to engage with the legacy of empire. And anyone who wants to celebrate the British Empire and its achievements from an Irish perspective has to start at that point and say what is there to celebrate in the context in which you forced people to become British subjects and then within a generation left millions to starve and emigrate. So it's a definitive part of the history that we try and work through. No matter our origins, colonialism mixes everything up. You cannot unravel colonialism. I can't go back and say to my great grandparents, why the hell were you Protestants? I want to have a Gaelic background that stretches back into the midst of time. You cannot undo colonial history. We are where we are. So the question is not, where do I come from? Where do you come from if you're outside the island? It's none of those questions. The question is, where do you stand now about liberation, about progress? And we would argue that, in a sense, the choice is quite simple, quite stark, but quite simple, all the way through Irish history, and it's still the same choice. Are you for empire or are you for republic? If you're for republic, let's work it out together, guys. Thank you. I went down to Churro Vasco, but the devil got there first. The road was hard and the way was hard. Churro Vasco was far worse. We were pressed in the Union Army, and we had our orders for to go down to the southern border on the sands of Mexico. Well, we come from Cork and Kerry, for that emerald world is past. My Mary would be pleased to know that I'm a praying man at last. Pressed into the Union Army, we had our orders for to go down to the southern on the sands of Mexico When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there The boys will harmonize A lovely Irish air Take this message to my Mary She's the one that's true when you found me, I had fought on the sands of Mexico. Well, the army used us harshly. We were but trash to them. Conscripted Irish farmers, not first class soldier men. Well, they bet us and they banged us. And they mistreated us also But we wouldn't kill our brothers On the sands of Mexico That's why they call it faith That's why they call it war That's why I threw away My Yankee sword John Reilly let us out he led us all down the road And we wouldn't kill our brothers On the sands of Mexico Faith and righteousness was all in vain Irish blood was shed once again 
And as I stand here on the gallows, it pleases me to know that history will absolve us on the sands of Mexico. The sands of Mexico, the bloody sands. Astoria may absolve her on the sands of Mexico. Give it to a guy who reviews books for the Irish News to review it. Come up to me one night and he said, That's a fucking long book. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, Is, is that the review? <laughs>